Elizabeth Arden cream. This one's wife. The cupboard is bare. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Tom Bauer, the author of Revenge, has written an article in the Daily Mail. He writes, The Sussexes have relaunched their brand so they can monetize their status as royals, this time with a new website, sussex.com, and a rather ludicrous coat of arms. This, of course, is reference to the new rebrand, yet another one, that has been issued by this one's wife and Harry following in her footsteps, clearly in an attempt to, as Mr. Bauer writes, monetize their royal status. Because if you look at what they've got to offer, what do you have? A prince who isn't very bright, who is good at the charitable work and enjoys rolling his sleeves up. And if he just got on with that, perhaps spending quite a lot of time in Africa, a place which clearly he felt comfortable there, he would do pretty well. And people would praise his endeavours in that regard. Not sniping about his family, not coming out with ridiculous speeches that have clearly been orchestrated by his wife, that instead doing something honest and meaningful. Naturally, that isn't going to be the case when it comes to this one's wife. For all of her black heritage, she has no interest at all in living in Africa. It doesn't provide the glamour, the connection to the A-list that she craves, that she believes that she belongs to. But that's what Harry can offer. He can't offer you any great insight into business. He doesn't understand it. He's never run one. He isn't a fantastic speech maker. But if he's given the right words by somebody competent, he can deliver them easy enough. He's made plenty of them. He does understand how to meet and greet and chat away to people because he's done that for years. And it's something that he should continue to do so. And there is a skill associated with it. It's not for everybody. But beyond that, other than what he's learned as being part of the royal family, he doesn't have much that he can offer at all. Then we come, of course, to this one's wife, a woman who, as a narcissist, believes that she's uber-talented, that she is the centre of the universe, but in actual fact is a mediocre actress and nothing else. A woman of no talent, who can't write, who can't sing, who can't dance, who can't interact with people in a meaningful way, watch her performance at the USO debacle, an individual that's so self-absorbed that it results in everybody else thinking, what an utter douche. Somebody that taints everything that she touches with her sedim touch. She has no insight, no brilliant observations to make, although she thinks she has. And therefore, all she has to offer is her connection to royalty. That is the only reason that people know about her, and it's the only reason why certain people have anything to do with her. Netflix didn't sign her up with that huge deal thinking, do you know what, she's got a reputation for creating brilliant content, and we see that there really is a huge amount of untapped potential here for her to screenplay fascinating programmes. No, they basically thought, she's going to have a load of shit on the royal family, let's get the gossip. And they got some of it, but not a huge amount, because it actually turned more into a whinge fest and left them disappointed. Furthermore, they queered their own pitch because of the victimhood that was engaged in, and the repeated complaining meant that people got bored of it. They tired of that broken record playing, and therefore in the circumstances, what they then produced, people weren't that interested in. If she had stayed away from the complaining and just explained this is what life was like, then she may have got a lot further. But the fact is, she has nothing to offer, and the only thing that the two of them have that is of interest to certain people is their connection to the royal family. And they clearly, being the hypocrites that they are, 
recognise that that's all that they've really got themselves and continue to try to monetize it. Mr. Bauer continues by explaining, you might feel the timing is odd. The latest controversy comes as King Charles embarks on treatment for an as yet undisclosed form of cancer. Scarcely what the doctors ordered, but then what can you expect? The Sussex cupboard is starting to look a little bare. Without new sponsorships, without a fresh Hollywood deal, there are few obvious sources of the money required to maintain their luxurious lifestyle. Needs must. The Duke and Duchess have done good business with their various claims and revelations on their Netflix documentary and in Harry's ghosted memoir Spare. But what more is there to say? The climate seems to be changing in the United States and the welcome the Sussexes enjoyed when they first arrived in California in 2021 is disappearing. Increasingly, Americans don't care much about this one's wife and Harry. It's striking that the Sussexes were not among the many celebrities enjoying themselves at last weekend's Super Bowl, see parts pass him. Perhaps they had better things to do that night. If the naked opportunism seems obvious, Sussex.com is further evidence, to me at least, of how hardened Harry and this one's wife have become in their opposition to the monarchy. Those bleating that the king's illness has a wonderful moment for reconciliation between father and younger son fail to grasp the true state of the relationship between the Sussexes and the royal family. It is horrendous. In this light, Harry's dash to London after hearing of his father's cancer is open to being interpreted as a cynical ploy. Did Harry really believe that a transatlantic dash to see King Charles would endear himself to a public that once adored him? His stricken father seems to have known better. No doubt encouraged by Queen Camilla, the king gave his son just over 30 minutes before Harry departed to sleep in not a royal palace but a hotel. No doubt this one's wife will have played a full part in their decisions. This, remember, is a woman who refuses to be reconciled with her sick father and has been accused of ghosting her former best friends. The Sussex's recent trip to Jamaica was notably inappropriate, perhaps even tantamount to treachery. In the aftermath of the Cambridge's unhappy visit there in 2022 amid the island's bid for reparations and its talk of abandoning the British monarchy as head of state, this one's wife must have known the Jamaican government's hospitality would embarrass Britain. I suspect she loved it, not to mention the private jet, the five-star hotels and the royal treatment dispensed by Jamaica's Prime Minister. Harry and this one's wife will be carefully advised, yet Sussex.com flirts with danger a sign, perhaps, that the stakes are now so high. The move exposes them to accusations of breaking a solemn promise to Queen Elizabeth that they would not commercialise the relationship with the royal family. Well, of course, this one's wife is a narcissist, and therefore, anything that she says or does is subjected to the narcissist conditional asterisk, which means it can be undone, turned on its head, broken, not abided by, changed at a moment's notice. Surely the time has come for the king to cancel their titles and withdraw the titles from their children. Until now, Charles has been too tolerant about the Sussexes' money-grabbing antics. The king failed to stamp down on the Sussexes after the Oprah Winfrey show. That would have been the wiser course of action. Instead, he gave their children titles as prince and princess and invited them to his coronation. Only Harry came, and then left for America in short order. Throughout this time, King Charles has been too lenient with a couple who have earned their living from damaging the royal family and Britain. It's time that changed. This latest breach of trust, a clear attempt to make money from their royal status, should be punished. Once the king recovers from cancer, he should make clear that Sussexes are no longer members of the royal family and not welcome in Britain. Strong words indeed from Tom Bauer, and legitimate ones based upon, of course, the behaviour of this one's wife and Harry. The cupboard is bare, and thus needs must, as Mr Bauer points out, that this one's wife looks to commercialise the royal relationship, capitalising on the titles again and again and again, demonstrating her sense of entitlement and her lack of accountability. 
We will see, of course, what happens next. But here is another individual identifying the poor behaviour of this one's wife and Harry with the usual call for the removal of the titles. Something which I'll be addressing in a further video later today. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.